it's been a super hectic week oh my god but today is sunday it's my day off and i'm here welcome to kutopia hi my name is sonia and i'm coming to you from helsinki southern finland Welcome to all the returning viewers and the first time viewers. It is great to have you here. This is the third episode of Utopia, our very own knitting utopia. And today, for the first time, I actually have something else than just knitting to show you. Today I'm wearing my Weekender sweater by Andrea Maury. This is one of my very favorites. I wear this quite a lot and it's knit out of um, this wool silk blend from Birtin Kehrama. Not an episode goes by without me mentioning Birtin Kehrama. <laughs> it's 50% finship wool and 50% recycled silk. And this is sort of, they get this yarn every now and then, I think it depends whether they get the silk. They don't always do. Um, this yarn was actually meant to be a shawl for my wedding, but then uh, I wore a sweater, <laughs> so I didn't need a shawl. But yeah, this is lovely. It's it's quite soft. It, it has the rustic feel of finship wool, and you can't see because this is uh, of white one but actually the look of the yarn is quite tweed like i really like this one uh, the yarn comes in two ply and three ply this is knit out of three ply so it's about 220 meters per 100 grams but yeah this is sort of working horse <laughs> sweater for me i wear this all the time but let's get on to finished objects i'm afraid we have no yoska hats this week at all i'm sorry <laughs> but we do have some twisted rip so it's not a complete shock <laughs> for all of us but yeah, the first FO I'm gonna show you is actually not quite finished, but I I wanna show it to you anyways because I think it's cute. I need this uh, scrap yarn baby cardigan. I was going through baby's wardrobe to took out all the small ones and checked if there are enough of the bigger sizes and I realized that babe, for the next winter baby has like three pairs of <laughs> wool pants or woolen trousers trousers leggings and I I told my friends that <laughs> under no circumstances I, I can need baby another pair of pants so I cast it <laughs> on a cardigan uh, this is meant to be a sort of summer cardigan for the baby. Uh, it has no pattern. I took the stitch count from Flux, from Tink and Knits. I think all of us have used Flux to take, you know, stitch count out of fl either Flux or Flux Light. It's, it's a perfect pattern. We owe so much for tin can knits for that pattern and flux is actually a sweater pattern but i just divided the stitch count and made it into a cardigan flux is my go-to especially with baby knits i used leftover yarns scrap yarns as i told you the gray one is arvetta Filkolana Arvetta, I held it double because I thought that, well, it's super washed merino sock yarn, so it's soft for the neck and for the wrists of the baby. And I think it looks nice. 
and then I have these two, the lighter blue and the darker blue, are both row one felted tweed that I had laying around. And then this is the fun part. I really like this one. I carried on with the light blue for one felted tweed. And then I have Noro. I think it must be Noro Silk Garden that I'm using here. But I just, I love the way it looks. Oh, there's some <laughs> dust on it, but it's really nice. And I just, I need to buy some buttons. I, I really don't have uh, proper buttons for this one. I usually prefer, especially for children, the baby knits. I prefer wooden buttons. I like the look of them, or coconut buttons. But I think that in this case, I might want some dark blue buttons to match this. But yeah. It was super quick, super fun knit to make, and I think I want to make at least one more baby cardigan, maybe two or three. <laughs> That's just such a quick knit to do. And so I, I couldn't wear, I, I would never myself wear anything like this, or would I? But it's, it's super cute. I like it. So, yeah, the first almost finished objects. And I really wanted to get rid of these yarns. Actually, I used all of the dark blue row one felted tweed. I have no color names to tell you because these were scraps. I think I need, yeah. I made a sold out now crop for my little sister as a Christmas present. And these were leftovers from that. Yeah, that was a. Um, yeah. It was sort of a nice thing to work on. Um, I had some trouble with the pattern, and I'm not the only one I know, but the end result was really nice looking. And I think my sister likes. It's too. Oh, that's what she told me. <laughs> but yeah, cute little cardigan and this um, the yarn that I used, it's a bit thinner than the pattern the flux suggests. But I used the needles that the pattern requires. So it's fairly loose, the gauge is fairly loose, but because once again it's a summer cardigan, it will work nicely. I think I used the second side from the pattern, or something, yeah. So this was a scrap yarn project, uh, I wanted to get rid of these yarns, not the Aravetta one, I have plenty of that left, but these yarns. And so I, I still have some, had some left when I finished this. And baby has this teddy bear. Uh, it's a, an emergent Baby's granddad, grandfather is a big fan of this English soccer team. So the teddy bear has the uh, team logo in the front. And I realized that baby had almost <laughs> chewed the logo off because it, it was just glued it, it it wasn't sewn in and i didn't want to rip it all out because maybe in a few years baby will also be a fan of that soccer team and then then they like to have <laughs> the proper merchandise but i didn't feel like sewing the patch in or anything like that so I made a daddy a sweater. And this is crocheted. I didn't have any pattern. I'm not a crocheter, as you can tell from here. But it was such a fun little thing to do. I just 
uh, I had this teddy lying around and I maybe wanted to play with it but I didn't let them because of the patch I don't want to show you guys what, <laughs> what soccer team I'm talking about football team <laughs> and yeah I had the teddy lying around I had these the scrap yarn lying around and I think it was last weekend the Easter and we were cleaning the place husband was I think he was cleaning um, the bedroom over there and I was here in our living room just tidying things up and it showed it just clicked I saw the teddy I, I saw the yarn I reach out for crochet hook from here I sat down basically just here and I started to crochet and I, I think I I was up to here when I got caught <laughs> that I wasn't actually cleaning but I, I was so excited and uh, quite I knew that I wanted to be able to get the sweater off the teddy bear at some point so that's why it has this opening because it the teddy's head is that big and <laughs> really this this isn't the cleanest looking thing and I wanted to be um, I wanted to work in flat I could have gone um, you know start working in a round around here but I didn't want to because I didn't want to break the sort of stitch pattern because when you crochet flat and when you crochet round it looks a bit different and I didn't want to do that but yeah baby hasn't complained so it's good enough and as you can see the fit is not perfect but I think it's quite <sighs> And once again, this is the light blue is Rowan Felder Tweed, and this is the Noro. I think it must have been Silk Garden because uh, it's not just wool. I miss Noro. You really can't buy it anywhere in Finland anymore. I don't even know if Noro exists anymore. But yeah, I'd love to get my hands on some Silk Garden. I really liked it. And um, these two other edges are in crocheted with Arvetta held. So, yeah, it must be. So, but still, I had some yarn left, not a lot, and I really wanted to use all of it. I was I was done with the yarn. I I didn't think that I had. I could come up with another scrap yarn project whether those would go so <laughs> let me just put it on I crocheted a hat <laughs> oh my god it's so silly once again the fit is not perfect but who cares? It's cute. It's cute. It's cute. And I I used all of the row one on the hat part in itself. And I still had some noro left. So I made a pom pom. And I didn't oh, once again. <laughs> this took around 82 grams of yarn. I love baby baby knits and baby projects because such a quick projects and they don't take a lot of yarn and these two I think it was around 30 or 35 grams of yarn and I used a four millimeter hook because that was the first one that I got my hands on it was such a <laughs> spur of a moment thing to make this but yeah I think it's good and I'm not a crocheter I have said it 
plenty of times but i love how you can sort of improvise with crochet it's easier to improvise when you crochet than when you knit. Uh, when I started this one, I just I just crocheted a chain that was enough to go around to Teddy's neck, and I went from there. So yeah, <laughs> and baby, uh, I haven't let baby played with this hat yet because they're only eight months old. But baby likes this one quite a lot. <laughs> and it's cute. And yeah, they have this theme. <laughs> oh, the team. Team sweaters, sort of, for the summer. But yeah, uh, crocheting for me is sort of a spring and summer thing, I find. Uh, I do knit throughout the year. But crocheting usually happens happens in the spring and summertime. So yeah, I might do something like that, this again, especially when baby gets older. And if they want to have uh, clothes for their toys, I'm not gonna be a mom who crochets stuffed animals for their kids, or even. I'd love to make these crocheted fruits or cupcakes or donuts or anything they can play with, but yeah, not gonna happen. It's like I told you I had this plan to crochet a stuffed fox for the baby, but no, never gonna happen. It's it's not my thing at all. But clothes <laughs> for toys, that's that, yeah, I can do that. It's cute. So, I got bit by a crochet bug. And... <sighs> Where am I gonna start? Okay. Baby needed a new toy basket. Because the previous one... Looks like this. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah, it used to look like this, this is just, um, it's a uh, paperback that I made out of a poster that I got from work. I can link the, the idea and you know, inspiration came from this YouTube channel called Sorry Girls, and they have a tutorial for these big paper packs, and I have done quite a lot of them. I think I made about 20 for our wedding <laughs> three years ago, two and a half years ago. But yeah, it's a good tutorial, and I will link it down below. And this, um, this. I always knew that this is sort of a um, temporary solution because it's made out of paper so it's not very sturdy <laughs> as you can tell and at first I think no it held on for five months around I think that's good enough but uh, firstly husband picked it up, up like this so it ripped and then the baby realized that there's nothing better than eating paper, so <laughs> yeah, maybe need a new toy basket that's not made out of paper. So I started to crochet. I actually I've I weaved loom weaved weaved with a loop. <laughs> yeah, I I weaved a rug a few years back. And I still had quite a lot of the leftover materials from that. So I crocheted, firstly I crocheted this. It's just this tiny basket. The material, I don't know the right term or word for this, but it's, it's this fabric thread 
fabric yarn that I used. It is quite stretchy. So uh, first I make this one. Actually, the white one is not a leftover from the rug. I have no idea where I got this from. But yeah, I started with this one and I used all of the material that I had. The white one. So this is quite small, but it's, it's nice because this is small enough that baby can reach and get toys out of this. And because it's soft, I don't have to worry baby bumping <laughs> themselves on it. And it was actually a fun thing to crochet while sitting on the floor with the baby because baby was all over the project. What are you doing? What is this? And they tasted the fabric, of course. <laughs> Quality control. Yeah, so this took me like three hours. And then I made another one. This is from the rug. The rug itself, it was this dark blue with peachy peach stripes and gray stripes. And this was actually, uh, this is, this doesn't stretch at all. So this was kind of hard for my hands to crochet. And this took like a day and a half. I, I crocheted all of these this week, I think. It's just something neat, uh, something very fast, quick to do. I didn't have to think any about anything. This has been quite a stressful week, so I didn't have the brain power to follow any sort of pattern at all. So these were perfect. And this is, yeah, this is way bigger than the white one. And baby so doesn't have that many toys yet that they could feel this. Luckily. <laughs> but since our baby is the first grandchild for my parents and for husband's parents, I think there's gonna be a lot of toys in the near future. So, this was the second one. And then just this morning I finished the third one. This is the peach, peach color that the rock has. The rock is actually in the storage right now. We don't have a place for it right now. And this, this, this peach, peach one, this is super stretchy, as you can see. And it actually, when I weaved the rock itself, it, <laughs> when I used the peach, peach material, and it's sort of, it looks okay when it's in the loom, everything is straight. But because of the stretch, and I had weaved it quite, it was quite a dense fabric that I got from it. It does this <laughs> with every peach colored, peach colored segment or stripe. And uh, most of the people have thought that it's on purpose. That, that I meant to make this pretty, pretty rug, but it was a mistake. Oh, yeah, maybe it wasn't a mistake. I'm gonna go with my inner Bob Ross and say it was a happy accident. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, crocheting this uh, was quite different from crocheting the two previous ones because of the stretch. But yeah. I think these are kind of, yeah, these are cute and practical and um, I have enough material for one more and then I'm done. I don't have any of that fabric thread left, so that's a good thing as well. But yeah, I use a 10 millimeter hook. Yeah, I, tr I started with the 8 millimeter, but that was too too small so yeah with the 10 millimeter hook and yeah few hours per, per task i'm quite happy with this yeah i think that's all of the finished objects for this week let's move on 
Okay, on to the works in progress. So firstly, I have started the fourth basket. As you can see, you start from the middle and you crochet in the round for as long as it takes. <laughs> so um, I have enough material that I think this will be a bit bigger than the dark blue one that I showed you. But once again, I have no plan. I'm just making it up as I go. And once I'm done with the bottom part, I'll just crochet one round with this sort of not through the whole stitch, but through the back loop of the stitch. And then it sort of turn, turns, turns the work so that when you continue working on round, it will just go upwards from there. Yeah, but I think I'm probably gonna finish this today or tomorrow, the latest, because it's such a quick thing to do. And I can do this while uh, with the baby. Baby is really um, interested in everything that I need or make. So I can't always, I can't knit on 2.25 millimeter needles with the baby because they're gonna pop their eye out or something. <laughs> but this is, this is safe. <laughs> safe enough. But yeah. I have nothing more to say. You can see <laughs> it's not the neatest bottom, but it doesn't matter. It's gonna be filled with toys or something else. I'm not sure if this is going to be for our baby or if it's going to be a gift for someone else or because I don't, I hope that we're not going to need a fourth one. Because actually I forgot to show you, I crocheted this super big one <laughs> a few years back. This was the third color in the original rock, this light gray. And this was used or meant to be used as a laundry basket in our previous home. But it wasn't actually that practical because this is quite heavy on its own. And when you fill it with laundry, then it's, it's too heavy. Because we didn't have a laundry machine in our apartment. We had, we used um, building, buildings. <sighs> what do you call laundry room and it wasn't even in our building it was the building next to us so we had to climb all these stairs we lived in a fourth floor and we didn't have an elevator so it really didn't matter that your laundry basket <laughs> on its own was quite heavy so yeah we uh, we haven't had much of use for this in the previous few years, but I think that once the baby drowns in stuff, toys and <laughs> everything else, that this will be quite good for. And once again, I, I just wanted to get rid of all the material, so that's why this is like this big. But yeah, I think it's cute because it has these handles. I, I didn't want to make handles for those those ones because they're so much more smaller so I didn't think that the handles would have been ideal for them but yeah so hopefully <laughs> this and the three baskets that I made this week are enough they better be I don't want our baby to be <laughs> drowned in toys but yeah that's the fir first week I haven't touched my midsummer shawl, midsummer rose shawl after the last episode. I think it's in the exactly same place that I left it because I, I just I didn't have the brain power to follow the chart. I have just enough brain power to follow a pattern. 
if it's simple enough. <laughs> but yeah, not for lace, not for lace. And now that we have our patio furniture, we bought a really nice couch for our balcony. I think it's gonna be sort of summer, summer neat for me in the balcony to work this beautiful lace shawl. So it's gonna it's gonna happen, but um, not for now. I mean, maybe next week because I survived <laughs> this week, but we shall see. But I have done quite a lot with my plum cardigan. I tried to show you this because, um, as you can see, it's a um, middle of row here. That's not good. I actually, there's this um, belief or saying in, in Finnish, in Finland, that you shouldn't, you shouldn't abandon, <laughs> abandon your knit mid row because that's gonna uh, ruin your love life. Whoops. <laughs> I'm not sure if I believe in that, but you shouldn't test your luck. <laughs> but yeah, it's looking quite nice. I, I did the sleeves already because um, I think I mentioned in the last episode that I'm playing yarn chicken. So I wanted to get the sleeves out of the way so I can work the hem as long as I have yarn left. And I use this quite often and even if I'm not playing yarn chicken I might do the sleeves in sort of middle of a project because that's that's just that's how I don't end up in Sleeve Island. Usually. <laughs> but um, actually, I, I don't think I'm playing yarn chicken here at all. I realized that this is a cropped cardigan with um, shorter sleeves, three, three quarter, quarter length sleeves. And I bought enough yarn for a full sized pullover. But then again, um, Fisherman's Rip takes more yarn than just plain stockinette or plain rib. So yeah, I'm showing you rib here. <laughs> a fisherman's rib <laughs> takes quite a lot of yarn. But yeah, I think I'm good. I'm, I think I'm good. And even if I were to run out of the out of yarn, I have this light gray, kind of gray, in the same same weight, yarn weight, that I could just do the last few centimeters of the hem with and it would look quite okay. But I don't think it will come to that. So yeah, Flaum Cardigan by Justina Lorkowska. This simple cropped cardigan with this sort of um, shawl color. A short sleeves or three quarter length sleeves and um, the structure of this cardigan is really interesting and it, it's really nice to knit. I, I think I might, might need another one at some point perhaps because this has been really lovely to work with and I'm almost um, I think I just need to need a few more rows, round rows, around, <laughs> and then I can do the pockets for this. So really, it's it's not. It's a few nights of work, and I'm done with this. Um, the yarn that I'm using is a fin sheep wool, undyed. Fin sheep wool from I think Unnaslahti farm that I got a few years ago. And for two episodes, I have told you that it's a three ply yarn that has 
two strands of natural of white and one strand of natural black and that's why it's this very very light gray but it's not true <laughs> if it were you know two strands of white and one strand of black it would be much darker mauled yarn actually quite similar to the Norwegian sock yarn that I showed you last episode that I had knitted the cozy socks with so yeah not no 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 <laughs> I've been lying to you I'm so sorry but I think it, it does have the the black black wool in it and it must be that the one strand of the three strands strands was spinned with a little bit of the black and that's how you got this color it must be let me show you from the I'm not sure if you can see nope yeah not gonna show but yeah that's how you get this beautiful li lively <laughs> light gray I love this it's so pretty and yeah I think this will be a cra really great need for the office if we ever get <laughs> if we ever can return to the office it's gonna be a great thing to wear in the home office as well and I think it's you it's gonna be great this um it's gonna be great little thing to throw over on the summer evenings when it's a bit chilly but yeah I'm almost done with this one I think this will be ready for the next episode or I don't think I will film an episode until I'm done with this but yeah, that's my flower and it's beautiful. Okay, the last whip. I started my Auni socks. Here's the twisted rip that I promised you guys. So Auni sock is this beautiful simple pattern by Finnish um, knit vlogger slash knitwear designer Nupu Nupu. And it's just it work. Uh, it's work from top down. You start with this um, bubble edge, which was kind of annoying thing to do, but it looks really nice. And then you just work these sections of twisted rib, and then you do the heel flap and the gusset. Mm. Once again, I would call this a French heel, but I'm not sure if it's a thing. And yeah, it's gonna be pretty. Um, I'm not sure if I uh, if I made the heel of flap just a few rows too high. I have to because it it looks a bit silly when I hold it like this. But I have quite a high arch in my foot so I have to try this on again but yeah it's, it's beautiful I, I told you in the last previous episode that this is probably gonna be a pattern that I will repeat often and yeah <laughs> I'm gonna do that it's so beautiful it works with this um, undyed natural looking rustic yarn it looks I have this yellow hand dyed wool sock yarn from Finnish uh, yarn dyer Rouva Silmusolmu and that's gonna be a beautiful pair of Auni socks and this is um this is the fingering fingering version 
and she also has a DK version of the sock and I will buy that pattern because even um, a lot of my friends and relatives prefer DK weight socks over fingering weight socks that's funny I think that um in Finland we have this yarn from Novita called Seitsemän veljestä, Seven Brothers. And that's the most popular popular yarn in Finland. It's a DK weight sock yarn. And yeah, it's it's the norm in here to wear DK weight socks. I think the fingering weight, so weight socks are more of a... For a... Uh, hardcore features <laughs> almost Novita does have a finger and weight sock yarn as well I can't, it's called Venla I think the name has changed a few times over the last year few years but it's not nearly as popular as the Seitsemän Veljestä and there's also a sport way sock yarn called Nalle. But seven Seitsemän Veljestä, Seven Brothers, that's the most popular, most sold yarn in Finland. And it's, for me, a DK weight sock yarns are for home socks, house socks, that I wear more like slippers inside the house. And if I need to if I need to wear uh, woolen socks in my shoes, I go with the fingering weight ones. Because if you have DK weight, DK weight socks in your shoes, you're gonna need bigger shoes. But yeah, that's the norm. So, anyways, <laughs> as I was telling you guys, so I do need quite a few DK weight socks every year as a gift for friends and family. And I'm always, I usually go with um, striped ones when you, because if you want to do cables with DK weight sock yarn, it's going to be even a, even a thicker <laughs> feeling sock. So I usually go with stripes or just one colored socks. I really, I don't do that much lace. With DK way socks, or do I? No, I don't think so. But I think that this this is the sort of pattern that works for a heavier sock as well. So I will buy the pattern and do. I will make so many more of these armies. Just you see. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, the yarn that I'm using is, hold on for a moment, it's called Wilhelmi by Vornue. It's a plastic-free sock yarn. It uses tensile instead of polyamide. And um, this undyed, this mid-gray. And I love the feeling of this. It's a fingering weight yarn and I usually knit my fingering weight socks with 2.25 millimeter needles. These Chaya goes. But the pattern suggests using 2 millimeter needles and I think that I could have done that. But I don't own any 2 millimeter needles. No, no, I don't. So this is okay, but I think the two millimeter needles would have been slightly better. But yeah, a beautiful. I I always have a sock project. Yeah, because sometimes you just you can't concentrate on on a whole cardigan or you can follow a pattern well this has pattern but honestly <laughs> i'm just gonna keep doing the twisted rip 
um, till the end and you know not much of brain <laughs> is needed in here but yeah I always have a sock project I don't know how to say this. I'm, I'm totally lost of words, but yeah, I always have a soft project with me. In addition to other other projects, I I have the the um, difficult one or the demanding one, which in this case is the Midsummer Row shawl, and then I have this sort of relatively easy, but I need to read the pattern one. <laughs> and then the sock one is usually the, the quick and easy one but <laughs> as as i showed you this week even the sock sock project was too much for my brain and hence the, the crocheting that's why you need to have more than one project all the time because you don't know how much energy you have use but yeah once again this all all the projects that i have shown you are like super good ones i'm, I'm really i'm really excited to work with this and i wish i had more time but i don't but yeah those are all the whips that i'm working on currently Okay, before I wrap this up, I want to tell you guys a little bit about my plans. So once I'm done with the Flom cardigan and the Omni socks, I will probably be knitting um, some, some Rose City Rollers socks from the Indigo dyed sock yarn that I showed you in the very first episode of Utopia. Um, Mother's Day is approaching here in Finland and I think I want to need a Rose City Rollers for babies, grandmas. So my mother, husband's mother and my grandma. Yeah, so that's, that's probably, that would be my next project but the, the, they don't have really well, you know Rose City Rollers, and I will show you them in the next episode, but they are such a quick knit to make. So I'm also thinking about starting a, a, a linen summer top. I have, I have three different kind of linen yarns waiting. I think that I, I buy, I buy linen yarn for summer top every summer but i haven't really <laughs> knit any summer tops yet but yeah this is gonna be the year i uh, wanna i think i'm gonna need a top from sari norklum she has she has quite a few different beautiful summer top patterns so i think i'm gonna go with one of those I, usually I uh, I don't think about knitting summer tops un until we're late in June or July and then I'm just ah, it's too late I'm gonna do it next year so now I'm on time I still have plenty of time to knit a summer top and then also I, I really want to start knitting on my Celeste after I'm done with the flower so yeah I'm so looking forward for warmer weather. Um, I ordered some sunscreen, so <laughs> so um, I'm ready for summer. I can't wait. But I think that's all I have to say this time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a comment down below. And yeah, I will see you next time. Stay safe. Bye bye.